If there was one thing Yuri Trubnikov knew, it was he hated walking. In actual fact, he knew more than that, such as, if he stopped walking right now, he'd die. Yuri panted through his half-mask, every breath condensed into a cloud of fog that obscured his vision as he continued to trudge up the snowy mountain path. It wouldn't be a literal death, but it might as well be. His father was clear it'd be the debts to pay if Yuri didn't reach Zimigrad before the Loban Trading Company. A dozen guilds waited at Zimigrad's gate for the first traders to arrive. First there, sold all their stock at whatever price they desired. Yuri glanced over his shoulder at the four Slovak towed carts behind him. Eight of his father's traders and his sister, Vera, slogged through the snow beside them. Four carts of Alchemist speed extract would fetch a nice price. Perhaps enough to buy better transport. Yuri crested the ridge and the world sloped away from him. At least they were over the worst of the Gromadny range. Straight ahead to the east, a mere 15 miles of foothills and tundra were all that remained between them and Zimigrad. Take over the family business, Yuri muttered. Said nothing about slogging hundreds of miles over mountains. The Slovak he was leading nuzzled at his coat, looking for the bread he kept for it. Yuri cast a withering glare at the lumbering six-legged creature. It thrived in the mountains, and if its flat, satisfied face and large saucer eyes were anything to go by, it actually enjoyed being cold. The Slovak flicked its large, bat-like ears and lowed mournfully. Yuri sighed and pulled the bread from his pocket and tore off a chunk. The Slovak snatched it from his hand with its long tongue and eyed the remaining piece as it chewed. Yuri shook his head and pocketed the bread. Greedy beast. Out of the corner of his eye, he saw Vera hurrying up the line. Her heavy trader coat dwarfed her petite frame and swished against the snow riding high against her boots. Hey sis, Yuri said as she fell into step beside him. Her expression was unreadable beneath her hood and half mask. The men are concerned the Lobans will catch up, she said. The men are concerned or you're concerned? Both. We'll be fine, Yuri said. We didn't leave a week early for them to beat us now. Shall I tell them to pick up speed? Vera asked. Yuri growled and shot her a narrow-eyed glare. She met his gaze without flinching. No, Yuri said at last. I'll tell them. He tramped down the line. If we don't hurry, we're all going to be guildless muckers. If the Lobans make it to Zimigrad first, father will make us pay for his stock. By the time he finished, he had to jog to reach the front. The serrated Slovak hoof-inspired soles of his boots ensured he didn't slip on the ice and snow. Yuri led the convoy down the steep path, and half an hour later, the ground leveled out and they picked up speed. Dribnikov! The trader who called him pointed back up the mountain. Oh, you guildless little worms, Yuri said as a Loban trading company crested the ridge behind them. Yuri smacked the Slovak's rump. Come on, time to earn your keep. He hated how the guilds turned the trading companies against each other. Promising the highest price to the first company from the gate motivated the traders to push themselves. But at what cost? Oh well, he didn't make the rules. He just played by them. Keep the Slovaks moving, Yuri yelled. We can beat them. The Lobans closed the distance while the towering peaks of Zimigrad grew before them. Yuri spent his time divided between trying to encourage his Slovak and contemplating fighting the Lobans. If they lived, they'd have twice the extracts to sell. But no, he'd have more chance of flying than convincing Vera to fight. And the Lobans outnumbered them. I see Zimigrad's gate, Vera said, pointing ahead. Only three miles remained. Yuri eyed the Lobans a mile behind. You know, we might just make this. The Slovak seemed to sense the trader's excitement, and their backs arched high as they lurched forward, their six legs moving in pairs. Though, it was more likely they sensed the end of the journey and a chance to sleep. A mile from Zimigrad's gate, Yuri allowed himself to smile. They would make it. The Lobans were still half a mile away. Those cursed, rich, guildless, Vera said, pointing to you They bought one of those new airships. Yuri followed a pointing finger to see the long, grey bulk of an airship sweeping over the tundra only miles from Zimigrad. Blue and green stripes decorated the gondola hanging from the mainframe, the Orlov Trading Company's colours. Yuri blew out a long breath. At least we can rub the Loban's faces in it. 
Vera continued cursing as the Orlov's airship landed by Zimigrad's gate. Yuri tried to ignore the sound of his father's voice in his head, berating him. That lost. Hundreds of miles of trudging, and that lost on Zimigrad's doorstep. Well, Yuri said, I don't care how much it costs or what the old man says. We're buying an airship. <laughs>